Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I hope you're having a fabulous week. Anna Grace has become quite the chatterbox, and she's fearless. And can you believe it? Baby Zachary is almost three months old. Holy cow. And not only that, but the summer is almost coming to an end, which is why I'm so thankful that today we'll be painting a vibrant sea turtle. I've got a traceable printout down below for you, and you can paint this on either mixed media paper or canvas, whichever you prefer. And lastly, comment down below with your favorite summery animal that you'd like to paint within the next 24 hours. And I'm gonna choose one animal that I'll create into a real-time tutorial and post it here on my YouTube channel. So make it a good one, and without further ado, let's get painting. So we're going to be working in the vertical view. Make sure you've transferred your traceable printout onto your mixed media paper or canvas. If you're using paper, I really recommend using painter's tape to tape it down to prevent warping. We're going to begin with our ocean background. I'm going to use the colors phalo blue and white, keeping the bottom half of my painting dark and then the top part a little bit lighter, just adding more white to my blue. And I'll use a large damp, clean flat brush for this. We've got lots of colors that we'll be mixing and applying today. So take this time to unwind, to relax, to take five deep breaths in and out, and to just have fun. As you're painting around the turtle, don't worry so much about not going over your sketch. It's actually better to go over your sketch than have little white specks left over. And this just prevents us from having to remix the color again and painting it a second time. I find it easier to start out dark working from bottom up and then I'll take this blue up until about the chin of the turtle, and then I'll start adding in white so that the top part, just in the background above the turtle, is a light blue. I'll do a small amount of mixing right below where the chin is of the turtle, where it kind of joins with that dark blue. And if your paint has dried there, just mix up this light blue with your dark blue and then just add it there with a damp brush. Now it's time to grab a medium flat brush and we're going to be working on the turtle shell now using grass green, cadmium yellow, and white. So I'll say that again, we're going to mix grass green, lots of cadmium yellow, and white. We want to start out with a medium to light value green. 
we'll be using this color to fill in the entire turtle shell and then while that's still wet we'll go in with some more grass green and just darken up the lower half of the shell and then move on to the lower half of the turtle. So be sure to mix up a good amount of this color because we'll be putting on the flippers, on the face, and we'll just be creating different variations of this green. Now, since my shell is all fully covered, I'm going to pull in just grass green and blend that directly on my canvas in the lower back end of the shell. Next, I'm going to mix up some more cadmium yellow and grass green into that green mixture. It's best that you only use part of that green mixture because we'll go back to it in a little bit. And we're just going to apply this to the belly of the turtle. Grabbing some more grass green, I'm now going to paint loosely underneath the neck of the turtle, but I'm not going to paint all the way up to the chin. I'm going to use a different color for that. I'm going to apply the same color underneath the other flipper, and it's going to go from around the curved upper part all the way down and it's going to be on the left we're keeping the right side white until we use a lighter green for that next we're going to create a very light green using what's green we have left on our brush with lots of yellow and white that's just a tiny bit of the previous green with lots of yellow and white. We're going to create this light, vibrant lime green color, and we're just going to apply a layer right above the dark green layer that we just laid down around the neck and chin. So I will fill in the chin with this color, but very soon I'm going to be adding lots more white so that we can paint the top half of the neck and the top of the flippers. Now you want to add enough white so that it's brighter and lighter than the previous paint mixture of green we were using, but just note that we're actually going to go even lighter, adding in more white, to paint in the very top part of the head and parts of the flippers. So you want to still make sure this has that lime green color, but it shouldn't be straight white. Now, in case you didn't know, those beautiful, colorful scales on the flippers and head of sea turtles is actually called scoots. I know it's a very unusual name, but I have a really cool technique that I'm about to show you in a little bit. But in order to do that, we actually are only going to paint in the top half of that flipper. But I'm going to paint the entire other half of the back flipper. So where we have white on the back flipper, we're going to use this color to fill in that white part. Now if you're an artist and you love painting animals and you're currently struggling with anxiety, depression, or addiction, I've designed what's called the Online Animal Art Masterclass. 
It's an online platform for creatives of all levels, ages 15 and up, and it's designed to help you reduce stress, build confidence, meet other animal-loving creatives, and learn all the acrylic painting techniques that I've learned in the past five years. And this is actually what helped me in my own recovery with addiction, depression, and anxiety. And as you can probably tell with two babies under three years old, this is still something that I use on a daily basis to help me manage my own mental health. I even have lots of resources, guides, and classes, especially new ones that I'm currently working on, including a pet portrait commission course for those aspiring animal artists who want to do this either part-time or full-time. So if this would bless you or a friend, check out the links I have down below. But without further ado, let's get back to this turtle. So right now with my round detail brush, I'm just getting in that little sliver of white that we have left over on that back flipper. And here I go, adding more white with just a little bit of the lime green color we have on our brush. And we're going to fill in the front part of the turtle. I'm not going to fill in the eye quite yet, but I am going to extend out that beak just a little bit more. It's not quite as pointy at the end as I'd like it. Next, we're going to mix up a color that's one shade darker than that really light lime green that we just applied. So I'm just going to remix the colors cadmium yellow, a little bit of grass green, and lots of white. So it's just one shade darker, and I'm going to fill in that line on the side of the shell, and also the front of the front flipper. So the flipper closest to us, just on the top part of it, on the top edge, I'll fill in with this color. Now hopefully you have just a little bit left of this color because we'll also be using it for the lower part of that eye. If you notice, there's just a little bit of white I left and use your detail brush just to paint that in right below the eye. Next, I'm gonna grab an even smaller detail brush. This is a liner brush. And with black, I'm gonna fill in the eye and outline the mouth. Now for this next part, I recommend you watch me before trying it yourself. I'm going to mix up the colors violet and white, and I'm going to create all different shades of purple on the white part of the fin. I'm going to leave a very thin border on the left side of the fin, but in between that outline and the green, I'm just going to mix up very loosely all these different light and dark shades of purple. Now it's important here that you understand that we're applying the wet and wet technique. So we're gonna be working in the next few steps while it's wet. 
So after I filled in the white, except for the thin white outline that I'm leaving on the left side of the flipper, I'm going to be mixing in, while this is wet, a combination of phalo blue, white, and violet. Okay, so that's phalo blue, white, and violet that I'll be mixing in to the center of this flipper while this paint is still wet. Now for the next color that we'll be applying of blue and violet, you can choose to use the same flat brush or a round brush like I'm using, it's up to you. But I'll be mixing up a darker value of white, phalo blue, and violet compared to the purple that we just applied. And I'll be loosely applying this to the center of the flipper. As you can see, I'm not covering up the left side nor the right side of the flipper. I'm just kind of keeping this in the middle. Next, I'm going to grab my liner brush again, that really small detail brush, and I'm going to mix up a darker value of the purple we were just using, but I'll still use white and violet for this. So first we're going to use, I'm just using this brush actually just to mix it up, and then I'm going to grab my detail brush and I'm going to outline the lines below the eye, and then using the same brush and the same color. I'm going to create those little scoots I was talking about, these beautiful colorful scales on the upper part of the head. Now let's talk about the shape and the layout of these scoots. They're evenly spaced out, but they're all different shapes and sizes. What helped me is creating rows of these scoots. So creating a row and then evenly spacing out ones below it that were more rectangular, smaller, larger, more triangular. And I pulled them all the way down to the bottom of the head. And then after that, we're gonna be doing another different technique. All right, so we're about ready to paint what kind of resembles elephant skin. It's almost like this bumpy, wrinkly texture. And how I create this is using the same purple, I'm gonna cluster lines together horizontally with gaps in between. And some lines will be long, some lines will be short, some lines will connect at the ends. So if you watch me, I'm just gonna work my way down from the bottom of the head all the way around that front flipper working beneath the shell and you'll notice I'll do a little change of direction with these lines right around the top part of that flipper. So unlike those scoots, these lines are thinner and they're also clustered more closely together.
As we work our way around the turtle's belly, I'm going to create more circular shapes, just a few on the side here. All right, so by now that purple area on the front flipper should be dry. If not, make sure you let that dry before moving on to this next part. I'm mixing up the colors yellow, a little bit of grass green, and lots of white. I'm creating a very light green, the same one that resembles the light green that we have on that front flipper on just the front top part with my small round detail brush, the one I was using to create those wrinkles. I'm going to create these little shapes. I'm going to cut in around that purple and blue to create all these little scoots on that flipper. So instead of painting each scoot individually, we're going to make our lives a lot easier by just creating the gaps in between them. I'm going to work from the top edge of the flipper, creating what looks more like triangular scoots. And then I'm going to work down from there to the other edge, the left side, which has more circular scoots that are a little bit larger and wider. In between those two areas, from the front top part where we're starting from on the flipper to the far left side, which are more circular, in between that area we have really tiny scoots of all different shapes and sizes. Again, they're gonna be, some are gonna be more triangular, some are gonna look more like squares, some have rounded edges, now, if you notice, the scoots closer to the top of the flipper are a little bit more condensed and smaller. And also, all the gaps in between all these scoots are the same width. They're not the same length, but they're the same width. And to create that, we need to be careful we don't have too much paint on our brushes, drying to our brushes as we do this. So make sure you wash your brush regularly so you don't have gaps that are thicker than others. Again, with all that we just went over, it might be helpful just to watch me do this and then giving it a go when you're ready. Now, if you recall, we left a tiny little border on the far left side of the flipper. And that's because we're gonna be cutting out into the background ever so slightly to create this bumpy circular scoots that are on the bottom edge of this flipper. Closer to the top, they're a bit smaller, but as we work our way down, they're gonna get much larger, a little bit more rounder. And then at the very tip of our flipper, then they become a little bit more rectangular.
All right, so we have all our scoots down on our front flipper. Now we're gonna start adding lots of color. I'm gonna mix up the colors fluorescent pink, a little bit of violet, and white. That's fluorescent pink, a little bit of violet, and lots of white. I have grown so fond of this pink. I've been using it in almost all my paintings lately. And I'm gonna mix it up with my other round detail brush, but pick it up with my liner brush. And at the very front scoots, kind of the triangular ones and a few in between, I'm gonna be painting inside with this color. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, I'm adding a few more along that green edge of the front flipper. I will tell you though, I go over this in later steps with the highlight of this light green and white. What I do keep, however, is I don't fully cover up all the purple blue in some of these scoots. I kind of loosely apply it to the front part, leaving a little bit of that color from underneath. Next, we're gonna create a little bit more of a dark pink just by adding more fluorescent pink into this color. Using my liner brush, I'm just gonna add this dark pink to the left side of the round left scoots on the left side of the flipper. Do you follow me? That was a lot. So if you watch me, I'm not going over those gaps. I'm staying within the scoots and not covering up all the purple. Now we're gonna to move to our little bit larger round detail brush and mixing violet with white. That's violet with white. I'm gonna create this medium to dark value of purple and I'm gonna use this color to fill in the green area of that back flipper. Now I'm not covering up all that green. I'm actually leaving just a little bit of green left in the center of it. And once I get to the center, I'm gonna more loosely apply my brush strokes because if you notice, there's only a couple scoots on the bottom part of that back flipper. But we're not gonna stop there with that color. We're actually gonna grab our smaller detail brush and we're gonna finish up the bottom belly of the turtle. First, I'm gonna start with more of those circular shapes on the side of the turtle's belly. But we know that it's part of the shell and so to give the illusion that it's a little bit maybe dirty, uh, dark, I'm going to create these more linear brush strokes back and forth, as you can see, working a little bit darker towards the very bottom. Using the same brush and the same color, we're going to climb up the neck and below the chin where we have that dark green, and I'm gonna create more of those little textured wrinkles, except they're gonna be a little bit more circular. We're gonna continue on doing the same thing along the back flipper, except I'm not really gonna work up the side of the flipper. If you notice, I'm just cutting into that light green. All right, so we're gonna take a break from our dark purple for a little while, and we're gonna remix the same medium to dark green that we had, or still have, underneath that back flipper. So it's yellow, grass green, and white, and it's gonna be the same value of green so that we can cut in, just like we did on that front flipper, to create those gaps in between the scoots. Now if you notice, on the bottom part of that back flipper, there's a lot less scoots and so I use a lot of this green to kind of cover up a lot of that purple, but we still want a little bit of it so we have a little bit of some scattered scoots along that part. So if you just watch me again, these are gonna be smaller, there's gonna be less of them, and especially around the middle, I'm gonna use a lot of this green to cover up a lot of that purple.
I'm going to use this green to cut into a little bit of that light green to give the illusion that there's more of these scoots and bumpy texture on the bottom of that flipper. Now we're really starting to make this sea turtle look more three-dimensional and a great way to do that even more is to add these little highlights within those circular shapes that we made along the bottom part of the shell. Now another way to make this turtle look more 3D is by cutting in between those purple lines that we created for the wrinkles around the neck. Just right there where we transitioned from a light green to a dark green, I'm gonna just sporadically cut in between a lot of those lines right around the chin and the lower neck. Next, we're gonna go back to that dark purple. If yours is dry, we just mixed up violet with some white to create that dark purple. And I'm gonna pick that up to apply that within some of the leftover gaps that I have that I didn't apply scoots or any of my wrinkles. So I have some that I'm gonna to touch up on that front flipper, that I'm gonna to add to that front flipper and the bottom of that back flipper. The other area that needs a bit more shading is the bottom of the shell furthest away on the left side of our paper or canvas. Now we're gonna work on the top of that shell. I'm gonna mix up with a separate brush the colors yellow, grass green, and white. We're gonna create a very light green again, almost as light as the color that we see on the very top of the head. And with a liner brush or a rigger brush, I'm gonna create those lines that we see, those gaps that we see on the top of the shell. It might be a little difficult for you to see, but I'm gonna create a line in the center of that shell, but not go all the way down because we actually want another line that borders the edge of that shell. So I'm actually gonna fix that up in a little bit with some green, because I want a gap where I can create a line that borders that light green edge. Before I pull that line up to the very top of the shell, I'm gonna create one that kind of moves towards that center line and then back up to the top of the shell. Using that same light green, I'm gonna create a loose highlight that layers over top those lines on the very top of the shell. Thank you. 
Next, still using my light green, I'm going to thicken up that light green border around the edge of the shell. Now it's time to add some more designs and color to that shell within the lines that we just applied. I'm going to create a medium value of green going back to my grass green, cadmium yellow, and white. And working within those light green lines, I'm going to loosely and sporadically add little brush strokes of dark green all over. I'm going to mix up what kind of looks like a lime green with a lot more yellow and I'm going to do the same thing creating a little bit smaller brush strokes and closer to the top of the shell and a little bit along the border within the green part of the edge of the shell. Into that yellowish green, I'm going to pull in more white and add a few more highlights to the top of the shell. With a little bit of that light green left on my brush and pulling in more white, I'm going to bring out the highlights around the lightest parts of the turtle. So where our light source is really hitting this turtle is just on the beak, on the top of the eye, just on the front of the head and along the front area of both flippers. All right, so get ready to start adding in lots more color. I'm going to use my orange and raw sienna now. So that's a little bit of raw sienna and lots of orange. You're welcome to use a different color, guys. You don't have to use the colors I'm about to apply to these scoots. And right below those pink scoots, not covering up all the blue, I'm going to create a row of this orange.
Now I'm going to move to the scoots on the turtle's head, applying a light pink to just those areas that are closest to the light source. I'll mix up the colors fluorescent pink, a little bit of violet and white, and just on the top areas, even into some of those little lines for the wrinkles, I'll apply this pink. Next, I'm going to create a vibrant, bright orange using cadmium yellow and orange, a lot more yellow than orange. And I'm going to apply this color to just sporadically on the top of the shell, just using sporadic loose brush strokes, as well as with a little bit more yellow, highlighting some of those orange scoots that we have on the front flipper. Now along the light green edge of the back flipper, I'll also add little dabs of this yellow. Yellow orange, that is. Now be careful, more isn't always better, and especially when it comes to adding these colors and designs to the shell. So I went in with some more of my grass green and just did some touch-ups, just kind of taking out the oranges and yellows that I didn't want. Next, I'm gonna mix up the colors violet with a little bit of fluorescent pink and I'm just gonna add a little thickness to that line around the turtle's beak. Is that a beak? Is that considered a beak? I'm not quite sure, but the turtle's nose, you know what I mean. With that same color, I'm gonna pull up the line that's right here along the eye. It's kind of coming up along the eye, and then I'm also gonna do some touch-ups around the scoots on the head. I'm going to go back to my light green to do some touch-ups around that chin. So if you still have some left, or if you need to just mix up some more, that's grass green, white, and cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to pull out the bottom of that chin a little bit more. All right, friends, you know what time it is. It is touch-up time. We are gonna be repeating the exact same steps that I've just gone over. We're going to be making our colors more vibrant by adding a few more layers. We're gonna be making sure that our proportion's right. We're gonna make sure that everything is consistent with the light source. We're gonna be altering the background if we need to just to make sure that the bottom part is a dark blue and the top is a light blue. So if you watch me, I'm just gonna be doing all these things, making this turtle look more realistic and three-dimensional and colorful. Now this is also where you should step back and look at your painting. 
the things that I'll be adding may be not necessary for your painting. You may need to add less or more or none at all. This is your opportunity to express yourself, to be as creative as you want to be, and to make it your own. All right, creatives, we have reached the end of this vibrant sea turtle tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. Give it time to dry if you used paper and of course if you used a canvas before pulling off any of the painter's tape if that's what you used. If you have any questions at all about this painting or about my online animal art masterclass, feel free to email me or leave them in the comment section below. Guys, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Bye.